This video is about different types of sampling. I know in the book, when we talk about sampling from a population, we'll be thinking of the population as a probability distribution, not a finite population. But I think uh, this setup here will help provide more intuition. So in this case, we have 16 playing cards. There's four diamonds, four hearts, four spades, four clubs. So four of each suit. Um, there's also eight red cards and eight black cards. Now for IID sampling, the idea is if we imagine we want to pick four cards, let's say one, two, three, four, to fill out a sample. We would just ignore the color, we would ignore the suit, we'd basically just mess these up, which I'm not going to do since I made them look so nice, but we just mess them up, uh, turn them upside down, not, you know, look at them, and just randomly pick four cards to fill out our sample. So each one we pick, it's unrelated to the other ones we're picking, and it's all just coming from the full population. So it's also identically distributed. Alternatively, you could imagine one possible downside of that is that we could end up picking, just coincidentally, four black cards and zero red cards in our sample. And maybe we're interested in both you know, red and black cards. This could be certain socioeconomic variables or demographic variables that you can imagine. Um, and we might want to enforce that we have an equal proportion of red and black in our sample to reflect the proportions in the population. So we might say, I'm going to reserve the first two observations for red cards, and I'll reserve the second two observations for black cards. So for the first two observations, we would only take the red subpopulation and then, like before, just kind of mess it up, turn it over, um, not pay attention to anything else, and take an IID sample from the red subpopulation to get those two. And then similarly, for the next two observations, we would take the black subpopulation, mess it up, turn it upside down, uh, pick two cards at random, to get the rest of our sample. Now in this case, we still have identical sampling. Um, you know, when we're picking a card, we're not paying attention to which cards we already got, and they're not um, you know, related in any way. Uh, but it's no longer identical. You can see here the red values are generally smaller. It's one, two, three, or four. The black values are larger. And so these first two observations, uh, they're even thinking of them as random variables, they're coming from a distribution that just has smaller values than the distribution that the other two observations are drawn from. So we do not have identically distributed data in this uh, stratified sampling. And the last possibility that I'll talk about is clustered sampling. So we could, instead of just sort of picking cards at random, either from the full population or from a subpopulation, what we could do is we could pick at random, pick one of the four suits, and then just take everybody in that suit. Um, so this is, again, like, you know, traveling to a town and just surveying everybody in that town. Maybe it's sort of cheaper or more logistically feasible uh, to do it that way. Um, so in this case, we could you know, do something like roll our novelty die to pick a suit, um, and you know, maybe it randomly comes up as hearts. Then we would take all four heart cards, and that would be our sample. Um, or if it came up clubs, we would just take all four clubs, and that would be our sample. Now in this case, we actually have identical distributions because each suit is equally likely. So we're sort of, you know, the first observation is equally likely to come from diamonds or hearts or spades or clubs 
and it's equally likely to be any value within that. So um, each, each of the four observations has the same distribution when we think of it from the before sampling perspective. But now we no longer have independence because once we pick a suit, we're picking everybody from the same suit. So if we happen to pick uh, hearts or diamonds, for example, we're going to get four low values, below average values. Whereas if we happen to get spades or clubs, we'll get four above average values. So what that means is that all these uh, observations are, to be more concrete, let's say observation one and observation two are positively correlated. They either tend to both be below average or both be above average. Uh, whereas with the IID sampling, we could get, you know, one and eight or uh, five and two. We could get high and low. When we're doing the clustered sampling, that's no longer possible. We'll always get either low, low, or high, high. So now, this clustered sampling, there's no longer independence. There's some dependence or some correlation among the observations. Again, thinking about it from this before sampling perspective.